And now it is time for this edition of the News Review. Edition of the News Review. Nagorno Karabakh officials have reported 51 new fatalities as Azerbaijan and Armenia continue their fighting over the disputed region despite agreeing yet to another ceasefire. The Defense Ministry of Nagorno Karabakh says that it has recorded more than a thousand deaths since the start of the clashes in late September. Baku also announced on Wednesday that 21 people were killed and 60 others injured in a shelling by the Armenian side. The International Committee of the Red Cross says it has witnessed shelling in urban areas on both sides, warning that civilian lives are being lost at an alarming rate. The ceasefires, two ceasefires actually, broke, brokered by Russia and one by the United States, have so far failed to hold, with both Azerbaijan and Armenia trading blame for violating them. To discuss that further, we're joined by Fred Uyar, journalist and political commentator out of Moscow, and also Ahmad Shahidov, head of Azerbaijan's Institute for Democracy and Human Rights, uh, live from Baku. Uh, let's begin with our uh, guests from Moscow. Sir, uh, the ceasefires have not been able to hold. Why do you think, what is the reason? Why are not both sides trying to solve their disagreements through dialogue? Well, it's been 30 years, uh, give or take, and all attempts at diplomacy have failed. I think there's a lot of blame to go around, but <clears throat> basically I think the mood in Azerbaijan is that it's time to settle this. Uh, there, there were seven regions occupied by Armenians in the first war, which ended in 1994. They were uh, cleansed of their inhabitants. So about 600,000 people were sent packing. Uh, and that situation has gone on, you know, for decades now. Uh, and so I, I think that this different no ceasefire is going to hold unless it is accompanied by some very vigorous diplomacy that gets at the underlying issues that have kept this conflict frozen but going on for uh, really more than a quarter of a century. Uh, so let's bring in our guest uh, from Baku, uh, Mr. Shahidov. Uh, what do you think would bring the Azerbaijani side to the negotiating table rather than uh, the war of the battlefield? Uh, you know, greetings from Baku. Uh, I want to inform you that the situation on front line remains tense today. And during the yesterday and uh, night on October 29, the Armenian armed forces fight at the positions of the units of the Azerbaijan army and our human settlements in different directions. So what about the peaceful negotiations? Azerbaijan uh, is ready for peaceful negotiations, but we have uh, some preconditions. It's, uh, it's, these are the requires of UN Security Council resolutions. For resolutions, I want to remind that in 1993 and uh, 1994, uh, UN uh, Security Council has adopted four uh, resolutions on uh, Nagorno-Karabakh issue uh, requiring the uh, withdrawal of all external troops from occupied Nagorno-Karabakh and other uh, surrounding regions of Azerbaijan. Now Azerbaijan uh, operates uh, and very successfully uh, uh, military operations in Nagorno-Karabakh front line. And we have already, Azerbaijan army uh, have already uh, implemented two uh, of these resolutions of UN Security Council. Now we are ready for peaceful negotiations, but we have uh, some preconditions in order to start these peaceful negotiations. One of these is uh, uh, accepting the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan by Republic of Armenia and withdraw all uh, Armenian troops from these uh, territories. Uh, without these uh, conditions, it's uh, impossible to start the peaceful negotiations, and it seems that Armenian authority, uh, they, they are not ready for uh, peace talks because of uh, recent statements of uh, Prime, Prime Minister of Nikol Pashin, Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, and other uh, officials of, of Armenia 
uh, they are uh, trying to enlarge these uh, clashes and they are uh, by firing uh, civil settlements, uh, cities far from the Nagorno-Karabakh conflicting zones, uh, they uh, want, uh, first of all, involve uh, the third countries to this conflict uh, by provo uh, provoking Azerbaijan. So I think, uh, first of all, uh, the requirements of uh, international law must be implemented uh, regarding the restoring of territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. After that, we can uh, start the peaceful negotiations. And, and uh, about the uh, consisting countries of this OEC Minsk group, I think uh, already uh, OEC Minsk group uh, activity uh, hasn't uh, give any uh, positive results. Uh, it must be changed, and only uh, region countries, in particular Russia, Iran, and uh, Turkey must be involved in this uh, negotiation process because European countries, uh, first of all, the France, uh, the France uh, couldn't keep its neutrality in this uh, mediator uh, process, and for French uh, President Emmanuel Macron stands next to Armenia and uh, support Armenia, and that against is against the uh, negotiation process and uh, mediator uh, function of uh, France. So we, we, we uh, think that uh, the new format of uh, mediating, the new format of negotiation process must be established. And already Iran Islamic Republic has declared I its uh, uh, readiness for uh, peaceful negotiations and suggested its uh, mediator uh, function in this uh, process. I think the best uh, format uh, will be consist of uh, the regional uh, countries, Turkey, Russia, and Iran. And the, we have some preconditions for, to start the peaceful negotiations with Armenia. And one of them is accepting the uh, principle of territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. And the second is withdrawing of all external troops from Nagorno-Karabakh and other surrounded territories of Azerbaijan. After that, uh, we can uh, talk about the peaceful uh, solutions of this conflict. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's turn back to Mr. Fred. We are from uh, Moscow. We heard about the preconditions of uh, the Azerbaijani side. Sir, do you know anything about the preconditions of the Armenian side? Because obviously the reason for this war is that these preconditions conflict. Okay, I think the single biggest problem here is the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh itself, the former Soviet uh, Autonomous Republic, uh, majority Armenian, whose status was never clearly defined. Um, I don't think Armenia is prepared to withdraw from there. It means depopulating or ethnically cleansing that place. Um, the rest of the other territories which Armenia occupied were always illegally occupied by Armenia. They should be vacated, but uh, Azerbaijan probably has to let that question of Nagorno-Karabakh stand for a while. This is also a feature of all the OSCE statements that the status of Nagorno-Karabakh should be left for later. That means it shouldn't be occupied by Azeri forces right now. Uh, that would be one problem with the Azeri preconditions. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> changing the whole format, I think that's something that uh, probably would have to be discussed. The o Minsk group, which op operates here, is the United States, France, and Russia. Uh, it, they have not achieved anything over 30 years. That's perfectly clear. It might be necessary to change that. But the danger, the biggest single danger right now, unless some people make compromises, including the Armenians and the Azeris, uh, mainly over Nagorno-Karabakh, is that this war will turn into a proxy war between Russia and Turkey. Uh, the Russians are already clearly introducing new technologies into the war to counter Turkish drones. Uh, it can become very bloody and very awful. Uh, people need to rethink a lot of things uh, and get it stopped on some new conditions uh, and or, or we are facing a regional catastrophe. Uh, back to our friend from uh, Baku, our guest, Mr. Shahidov. Uh, do you also see a regional catastrophe? You know, uh, everything depends on uh, Armenia because 
uh, especially uh, after uh, several uh, failures in on battleground, Armenia's army uh, targets the uh, civil settlements uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, especially in uh, main cities of Azerbaijan, Ganja, Baghdad, Tartar, which are the far from the uh, war zone. And so, sure, Azerbaijan uh, reserves its right to uh, destroy these fire points. But anyway, uh, Azerbaijan army operates uh, only in Nagorno-Karabakh uh, battleground. We never target any uh, civilian targets, even military fire points in the territory of the Republic of Armenia. But uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, by firing on uh, civil uh, village civilians in Azerbaijan territory, Armenia provokes Azerbaijan, and uh, they want uh, to involve the third countries uh, for, uh, for to this conflict. And there should be uh, what about the peaceful talks between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan? As you know, there should be uh, talks between the foreign minister of Azerbaijan and Armenia in Geneva tomorrow, and we will see uh, the, how the Armenian side is committed to the basic principles. From now on, we will uh, uh, assess for ourselves whether these principles are relevant today. However, during uh, this month, President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev has repeatedly stated that. Uh, Azerbaijan as a whole uh, has adopted these principles and of course there are certain points that do not uh, satisfy us as well as for the return of five districts in the first stage of course this is the no longer actual because uh, the basic principles set the order of uh, return the territory and the president of Azerbaijan noted that in the first stage five districts Kalbajar and Lachan districts uh, in the second stage and that the return the Azerbaijanis to the uh, territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. In principle, the return of all IDPs to the former place of residence. Uh, but, um, you know, everything uh, depends on uh, Armenia. If Armenia will continue to fire on civilian, civilian settlements uh, of Azerbaijan, of course, this uh, will lead to more uh, casualties and tra tragedy, uh, not only for Armenia, for all region countries. That's why I uh, hope that the regional uh, countries, Russia, Iran, and Turkey, will be uh, closely uh, involved in peaceful negotiations and uh, will push Armenia to respect the international uh, law uh, and uh, respect the activity of uh, mediator countries as well. But Thank you very for much. now, yes. I'm very sorry, we're running out of time. So, Mr. Fred, we are your final comments, uh, considering what we've heard from our guest from Baku. How long do you think this war will last? I think that uh, diplomacy needs to step in. Uh, and yes, the regional countries should play a big role. The issue of civilians dying is a mutual one. We know that uh, uh, Azerbaijani artillery and rockets target Stepanakert and cities of Gorno Karabakh. A lot of civilians are dying there. Uh, that is one reason why a ceasefire would be a good place to start, uh, to end the killing on both sides. Uh, but then there have to be very, very vigorous, robust diplomatic steps taken, uh, because otherwise this war does does pose the danger of getting out of control. Thank you very much, Mr. Fred Weir, journalist and political commentator out of Moscow, and Mr. Ahmad Shahidov, head of the Azerbaijan Institute for Democracy and Human Rights. Uh, thanks to both of you gentlemen for your comments, and thanks to all of our viewers for following this edition of the News Review.